Hello there. In this session, we will discuss speed time graphs and then we will see velocity time graph. So, by now, you've got the basic understanding of a graph. So, I'm sure you understand that if I plot speed time graph, you know that this graph will give you the variation of speed with time. So the curve that is drawn will tell you how speed changes as time changes. So what if I draw a graph which looks like this? What can we infer? We can see that the line is horizontal which means that its y coordinate is not changing. So if this point corresponds to some speed v0 then it means that the speed is not changing with respect to time which means that this depicts a constant speed so horizontal line like this will show you constant speed right what if we have a straight line but with some slope I'm sure you figured out the slope for this is zero as this line is flat right so if we have a line which looks something like this, what can we say about it? Let's think about the slope of this line. If we were to find slope, once again we would take two points, measure the change in y, the change in x and the slope would be equal to change in y by change in x. Now the change in y in this case translates to change in velocity and the change in x translates to the change in time so change in velocity by change in time I'm sure you know is acceleration so the slope of a speed time graph gives you acceleration right so a straight line like this with some slope represents constant acceleration so this line shows constant acceleration right on the other hand if you had a line which does not have a constant slope that is it is curved for example take this now, this line has a continuously varying slope at this point you can see the slope is less at this point it increases at this point it increases further so this line has a variable slope hence it represents a situation where the acceleration is variable also we see that the steepness of these lines is increasing hence the slope is increasing and we can say that this particle the motion being depicted by this curve is such that the acceleration of that particle is increasing continuously Right, so these are the three cases that we can make from these three lines. So the last line shows variable acceleration. Right. Now, another thing that we can talk about in a speed time curve is the area under the curve. I hope you remember in the basics we had studied what area under a curve dimensionally represents it represents y into x now v into t you know would give you distance right and let's see how let's say you have a curve like this you have two points a and b and you wish to measure the area under this curve so if we measure that we will have one x dimension because you know area is always one quantity into another quantity so you will have something like time into velocity right so this is a trapezium and you i hope you know the formula for finding area of a trapezium it is half into sum of parallel sides into altitude so the sum of parallel sides in this case both of the parallel sides represent velocity so their sum would also represent velocity so sum of parallel sides into altitude which is a b which is time 
so velocity into time becomes displacement for this case it is distance so the area under a speed time graph will give you distance so the slope gives you acceleration and the area gives you distance these are the two important things that you should remember related to a speed time curve along with that you can infer from the lines whether the acceleration is zero constant or increasing or decreasing right so after understanding this let's move to a velocity time graph so if you have a velocity time graph the features would remain almost the same if the line is horizontal that means that the acceleration is zero right if we have a line which looks something like this then that implies that the acceleration is constant if the slope is increasing continuously that means the acceleration is increasing on the other hand if you have a curve like this this means that the acceleration is decreasing continuously now let's compare this to another case where you have a straight line dropping down let me call this line ab and this curve be a dash b dash so what is the difference between ab and a dash b dash ab represents negative acceleration that is the velocity is decreasing but the velocity is decreasing at a constant rate that is the acceleration is negative but still it is constant it has a constant magnitude in case of a dash b dash the acceleration is negative and its magnitude is continuously increasing because its downward slope is continuously increasing so actually a dash b dash represents a case where the acceleration is negative and increasing to look for a case where acceleration is decreasing it would look something like this in this case you can see that initially the slope is high as you move forward the slope keeps decreasing so if this was a velocity time graph this curve shows a situation where the acceleration is positive but its magnitude is continuously decreasing right so these are some of the cases which help us understand different curves the second thing is that if we find area under a velocity time graph the area would give us displacement so the area under a displaced uh, area under a velocity time graph gives us displacement right so once again let's think of the differences between a speed time graph and a velocity time graph well the first one is fairly obvious that speed time graph gives us distance whereas velocity time graph gives us displacement the second difference is that speed is never negative it is always a positive value hence a speed time graph can never go below the axis so such a speed time graph can never exist because a negative value of speed makes no sense right so a speed time graph will always remain above the axis remember this so a speed time graph is always above the axis whereas a velocity time graph can go below the axis and it would go below the axis whenever direction changes right now one more thing that i want to tell you is that the slope of a speed time graph gives you acceleration only when we are sure we are talking about one dimensional motion because a constant speed does not mean zero acceleration the particle could be changing direction continuously 
so when we write that the slope of this graph gives us acceleration we are working under the assumption that the motion is one dimensional which is the case most of the time when we plot such graphs so that is why only in one dimensional motion it is okay to say that the slope gives us the acceleration right so let's now look at a simple example based on these ideas so let's now look at an example so it is given so we are given basically a velocity time graph which looks like this so this point is t equal to 10 this point corresponds to t equal to 20 this is t equal to 30 and this corresponds to t equal to 5 also this top point topmost point corresponds to a speed of 20 meter per second and this bottom most point also corresponds to a speed of 20 meter per second but I'm sure you understand that since this is a velocity time graph these two speeds are in the opposite direction because one velocity is the negative of the other right so let's label these points let this be a b c d and e so we are interested in finding the distance covered the distance covered the displacement and third the points where speed was zero and fourth the points where particle changed its direction right so we have to find distance displacement the points where the speed was zero and also the points where the particle changed its direction of motion so let's start with finding the distance now we are given a velocity time graph so we know that if we want to find distance or displacement we need to find the area under the curve right so now the curve that we have has two sections right one which is above the axis one which is below the axis so this is the area which is above the axis and then we have area which is below the axis so whenever there is some area which is below the axis that means the displacement is negative and negative displacement implying that the motion was in the direction opposite to the initial direction of motion right so the distance if it has to be found can be found by simply taking modulus of such sections so you can split these this entire curve into two sections where the area is changing sign you can find the area of both of them then take modulus and add them right so s1 is this area so this is simply a triangle with a base of 10 and height of 20 so this becomes half into the base is 10 into the height is 20 so this becomes 100 units right so while going from A to C the distance covered is 100 meters let's look at the second uh, part which is the motion from C to E in this case again it is a triangle so we'll use half into base into altitude the base has a length of 20 because we are considering a section between t equal to 10 and t equal to 30 between this the time has changed by 20 units so the base is 20 into the height now the height is below the axis so it is actually negative so the height is minus 20 so this becomes modulus of minus 200 so modulus of minus 200 gives you 200 
so 100 plus 200 gives you 300 meters so this is the total distance covered by the particle which has moved on this path so while going from A to E the particle has covered 300 meters right so this gives us the answer to our first part which is finding the distance covered now for displacement we can simply drop this modulus right we can take the displacement of each section and simply add the two so total displacement is displacement in the first half plus the situation in the latter part right so it becomes 100 minus 200 and this is minus 100 so the net displacement in this motion is minus 100 meters right coming to the third part the points where v is zero now if you look at the graph it's fairly obvious but sometimes people make the mistake of confusing point b and d as the point where the particle stops well that is act those are actually the points where the speed is maximum so particle comes to rest every time it crosses the coordinate axis the x-axis so point a c and d are the points where v is zero because these are the points where the graph cuts the x-axis and whenever the line cuts the x-axis that is the point where the y coordinate becomes zero and in this case the y coordinate is velocity and that means that at these points the velocity is zero that brings us to the fourth and the final part which is you have to find the points where the particle changed its direction that is just before that time the particle was moving in one direction and just after that it was it started moving in the opposite direction so can you think about those points well these points are nothing other than a c and e but there is no motion before a or after e so we can say that c is such a point where velocity changed its sign you can see that from the graph that just before c velocity was positive and just after c velocity became negative so at c what happened was that the particle came to rest and then started moving backwards so c is the point where this particle changed its direction right now this entire graph shows a one dimensional motion so let's try to find out how this particle moves in one dimension let this straight line depict the line on which this particle is moving so let's say this is point a so while going from a to b i'm sure you can guess that it has covered half of this total distance so point b is at a distance of 50 meters from point a so point b is 50 meters in front of point a how did we get that we found the area of this portion which is only half of the this triangle right now look at the slope from a to b it is positive right and you can also find the magnitude of that slope this height is 20 and the base is 5 so the slope is 4 right change in y by change in x so that gives you a slope of 4 which means this is the value of acceleration so from a to b the particle was moving with an acceleration of 4 meter per second square and a and b the distance between a and b is 50 meters right after this from b to c i'm sure you can guess the distance moved was again 50 meters because that is the area between b and c at this time we would look at this area this is the triangle that we'll be looking at right so from b to c the particle is still moving forward which is shown by a positive velocity 
but you can see that the line is dropping now right which means it has a negative slope also once again if you find slope change in y by change in x gives you minus 4 why is it minus 4 because change in y coordinate is minus 20 since the final y coordinate is less than the initial y coordinate so the change is negative because change we know is the final value minus the initial value right so from b to c the acceleration is minus 4 that means the particle started to decelerate so it accelerated from a to b and then it started decelerating from b onwards and finally at point c it comes to rest right so it starts from A, accelerates up to B, decelerates and stops at C. But after that, right after C, it starts to gain negative velocity. Right? Also, once again, it is accelerating as we can see from its slope. Again, we'll measure the change in Y by change in X. Now the change in Y here is 20 and the change in X is 10. So the slope for this is 2 also the line is still pointing downward so it is actually minus 2 right so let's interpret that minus 2 from point C the negative velocity implies it has started moving backwards and minus 2 implies that this acceleration is also backwards so after having stopped at C the particle once again starts to accelerate right but it is accelerating in the opposite direction and hence the negative sign right so then how much distance does it cover till it reaches point D for that we have to find this area this is again a triangle the base of which is 10 and the height is 20 so the distance moved is 100 but notice that this area is below the axis and hence it is negative distance or a negative displacement rather so it moves a hundred meters to reach point D which means this point A is the point D so while moving from C to D it has come back to its original position right then from D onwards we see that the slope is again positive and if you find the change in y by change in x once again the value is 2 but this time the value is plus 2 now what does this mean the particle is moving in the negative direction and it has a positive acceleration this means that while in moving in the opposite direction the particle started to decelerate right because it is moving in the negative direction and it has positive acceleration this means that it was decelerating in the opposite direction try to think about it with ease so you'll come to the conclusion that from this point onwards the particle has started to decelerate but it is decelerating in the negative direction hence the positive sign right so once again from D to E the particle covers another hundred meters so this is where point E is where the particle finally stops so the particle the entire motion of the particle is such that it goes from point A to B while accelerating from B onwards it may, if this is a vehicle let's think about it like a vehicle so from point A this vehicle was first being accelerated so from A to B there was acceleration then point D onwards brakes were applied and this car or this vehicle stopped at point C from that point onwards we started moving in reverse so in reverse from C to A this vehicle was accelerating and from point A onwards once again brakes were applied and it finally stopped at point E so this one dimensional motion was depicted in this graph right so with this we come to the end of this session in the next session we will very briefly discuss relative motion
Thank you.